What we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at the collision deformer, which allows you to create almost soft body simulation type animations, but without having to go through a lot of the work and headaches that come with simulation. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's talk about the collision deformer. Um, really a great way to kind of recreate soft body dynamics without having to um, use soft body dynamics, though. Um, since they have been reworked, uh, I do find soft bodies you know, quite a bit easier to work with. So I don't use this quite as much as I used to. Now the skull actually came from um, Asset Browser. If you just type in skeleton, I just grabbed the, the skull elements, copied and pasted them into a new file and then connected objects and deleted, which is why this is called top teeth instead of skull. So here's what we have. We're gonna also create a cube um, as that will be kind of the main shape that we apply the collider deformer to. I'm just making sure my objects fit inside. Not 100% necessary, um, but it will uh, be better for the setup I'm going to be going with here. So next up, we're going to create the collision deformer, make that a child of our cube, and then switch to the colliders tab here. This is really where everything kind of comes together. You have different solvers. Um, so intersect is kind of a good general purpose one, um, you know, if you're working with a plane. Otherwise, you know, depending on if your object is going to start inside or outside the object uh, that has this deformer, you would want to use a different mode. So I will switch to inside and then drag in our text. So our text is inside our object, the collider, the solver is set to inside. So that's where we want the object to stay inside of our cube. But now if I just kind of come here and start working with this, you won't see much of a difference. And that's because our cube needs segments. So I will add some segments. And now when I move my text, you will start to see something. And as this does still have relatively few segments, you know, we don't get a lot of definition here. So if I want more definition, I need more segments in my cube. Why don't I just go 200 by 200? I will say the higher you go here, the more things will slow down. So you do want to be a bit careful with how quickly you turn this up and you'll see kind of the performance, oops, um, start to, you know, slow down a little bit. All right, so that's about as far as I can go. And kind of see that's actually pretty good can hide the text here and you know so this is our result right currently our mode is set to inside if i was to switch this to outside you can see it's starting to push in um, and so if you ever wanted to kind of add a bevel um, or beveled or embossed you know design to something this is one way you could do it um, i probably would do it other ways but in theory, this can work and you can see I'm able to kind of push in a little bit. Switch this back to inside. You could also maybe see if inside stretch works a little bit better. You know, sometimes these other modes are hit or miss, but you can see that in this case, that the stretch mode is working a lot better, right? So that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna pull this back just a little bit for the time being. Um, and come in here to talk about the maps section. Now, um, you may be looking at the edges here and wondering kind of why are they so hard edged? And that is because of the fong shading on our text. So as we turn this higher, you'll start to see that smooth out. It will also smooth out our other edges of our cube. You know, sometimes mixing up the style and the angle can help with that. So, yeah, I think, perfect. That looks pretty good. Still maybe just a few minor issues there, but overall nice and smooth and we maintain the hard edges everywhere else. So back in the collision deformer maps, really this stretch relax is gonna de determine how hard or smooth the edge is here um, from the collision deformer. Now you do this using a um, vertex map. Uh, probably could use a vertex color map, but I've only tried it with a vertex map. So vertex map here, and actually I need to make this cube editable first, although I don't think you have to, it's just a little bit easier. Um, so I'll make it editable, could have also just hit C on my keyboard. And you know, without making it editable, you just have to find a way to, to pull up your paint tool, um, which I believe is under like character or something. But 
I wasn't getting that to come up unless I made this edible, but you could come in here and then paint this a little bit of these edges here and you'll start to kind of see what happens once we drag this map in. In fact, we could come here and take our map that we've created now, drag it here and you'll see the result. You can see how hard edged everything is except for where we paint. It's a little bit smoother more relaxed. So you have a little bit more control with this. You know, um, you would need a pretty high polygon mesh for, for me to be able to paint the detail exactly where I wanted it. I could also maybe use just a field. So, um, you know, maybe something like a random field just had a little bit of randomness um, to that. Although that doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. Um, but yeah, that might be another way to control this, um, the smoothness of it by using like a random field instead of just painting it. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, coming here to the cache section, you know, as this does start to slow down, as you add more points and segments to, you know, the cube in this case, uh, if you animate it, you could absolutely cache this to help speed things up. Um, from my experience, the cache does take quite a while, um, just all things considered. <clears throat> so uh, just keep that in mind, it also, does take up quite a bit of space in your memory. Compressing that should help. And then if you make any changes, uh, you will want to you know, update the cache, recalculate it, and that type of stuff. So there's that. We also have our advanced section, which really can control the quality. And I'll kind of show that with the skull here as well. All right, so skull not really doing anything because we have to add it as a collider. Now I can come here and start pulling this. And it's actually doing a pretty good job here. But just for fun, if we switch back to say the inside mode here, you can see it breaks pretty quickly here. Um, and what I found is the steps is a great way to kind of fix this. Um, you can see the text completely disappeared once we switched that mode. Um, but just really quickly, the size can um, is something you can change if the scale of your scene is either really small or really large. Steps is kind of like your general quality setting. So as I increase this, you'll see it will start to kind of fix some of the issues around the bottom jaw here. Bring back some of the text as well. I find that really strange. It's only doing it kind of in the middle section there. Um, and also that we just have that little bit that is still kind of broken. So that's really interesting. But as I mentioned earlier, with using too many segments, increasing the number of steps can also kind of slow things down um, a lot. And also one thing I've noticed with steps uh, is that it starts to fill in some of our letters here. So somehow more of our text is back. This could just be a situation where we need to turn the, uh, the deformer on or off, maybe move the text forward and back again, you know, because it's a bit strange to me how it's only forgetting that one part of um, the letter. Um, stretch is almost like adjusting kind of the fabric here and how far we want this to stretch back. So I'm going to turn down the steps again and we'll switch back to our text, All right? Which maybe we'll move just a little bit further back. There we go. So the stretch property here, as you make this larger, it's gonna have this like stretch further back. Um, and so that's one way you can kind of soften things up a little bit. Same with relax. It's just kind of kind of smooth the edges here. So as I turn this up, maybe to like 16, we should see it get a little bit softer there as well as everywhere else. Not perfect, um, still could maybe be a bit smoother. You do wanna consider the underlying geometry here. It is text with a hard edge, um, but you also just wanna think about the number of polygons you have, right? Like it just can't bend that smooth because we don't have that many polygons. So using more polygons, you know, and sometimes even throwing it into a subdivision surface, oops, at the end, um, can help smooth out the end result as well. But ultimately, you know, we're still gonna have some of those hard edges. We could also use a different, you know, deformer to help here, like smoothing, all right, to kind of help smooth things. So now, right, that's almost too, too smooth. We can't really see what we're doing. 
but that is starting to smooth this out and give us something that looks pretty good. We're losing, still losing a little bit of definition. Um, you know, what I would probably do is come back here, uh, make sure we're set to inside stretch because that was giving us a really good, you know, result. Uh, maybe pull the text a little bit further out so we can really kind of push this and then experiment a little more with the smoothing. And let's see what our advanced section is here. So stretch is pretty high. I can maybe turn that down. The steps are pretty low. So I don't think I can do much more. Um, and I will say I didn't have a whole lot of luck with fields. Uh, so, you know, I did use that, you know, without caching it though. And, and that I shouldn't, I wouldn't think that would make a difference. Um, but, you know, for instance, if I create a linear field, right, you'll notice that it's kind of working if I hide the text in the skull, but if I move this, it doesn't really update. So it's like it works at the beginning, um, but that's it. So there's probably something I'm missing here. I think fields could be an interesting way to animate this, um, you know, but it just doesn't seem to really you know, work. And I don't know if it's because it's, you know, not updating, turn off smoothing, you know, that type of thing, but it just wasn't working the way I was expecting, which is a shame. Cause like I said, I think it would be a really interesting way to, to work with this. So if anybody has any ideas about that, let me know. I don't pretend to know everything about Cinema 4D, but that is pretty much it for the collision deformer. So that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care.